Hey everyone at home and wherever you may happen to be. Welcome to Art Explorations for Kids. I'm Jamie Fisher and I'm going to be your teacher through the semester. Uh, we'll be doing several projects that you and your children can follow along with on a weekly basis. And we also have kits made available so that you don't have to scramble through each week's lesson wondering what you need or what you may be missing. So we're going to go ahead and dive right into our first lesson and today's lesson is going to be flowers. We're going to do a floral bouquet and we are going to focus on the shapes of petals Oftentimes, when you're drawing a flower, you're not really thinking that that uh, specific flower has all these different shapes. You may just be making circle petals or ovals. And to demonstrate, I'm going to pull one of these guys out. And you can see just by looking at this flower, all these different edges. It's not just a perfectly round edge. And that's what we're going to try to mimic in our painting today. Because we don't want to have um, a bouquet that doesn't have any character. We want our flowers to have some real character to them. So first you're going to start off taking your Jumbo Jet black pencil. And remember, you do not have to do exactly what I do. but um, you are welcome to follow along as closely as you'd like. I'm going to start off by creating a lily up here at the top. And I'm creating kind of this roundish shape at the bottom. But you see it's not perfect. And this is going to be an outer petal of the lily. It's getting wider thinner at the top, wider, and thinner at the bottom. Then I'm going to repeat that. And then I'm going to have another petal coming over here, just kind of flopping off to the side, getting wider and thinner. And this is going to be the bottom of the lily before the stem. And that's where the stem is going to start. And then we're going to go ahead and add in those little center bits of the lily. You know those fun little prongs that stick out? They get yellow. Sometimes they get fuzzy and then the, that fuzz gets all over everything. Well that adds a nice touch of color to them and we're going to put those right in the middle. So now we have our first flower and you can see I started off with this top lily here, and now I'm going to start adding in this mid-ground right here. So these are more like garden roses. I'm going to come up, and their edges are a little bit jagged, and swoop around to the edge here. And from there, I'll create the center of the flower. Now I know where I want my next petal to start. And I'll do similarly to the first. And across from that petal, repeat, circle around, and then repeat and fill in for the fourth petal. Lots of flowers are multi-petal, so they'll have petals uh, in the front in the back. Um, of course, you do have your flowers that have just petals as a single row going around. But this flower has more petals in the back. So we're going to make sure that we add those in just behind each space that you've created. All right. And now we're going to go over here and add another type of rose. 
We're going to do it from a side angle, which makes for even more shape differentiation. So this will be the side of this petal. We'll make it almost like a, a dripping almond. There we go. We'll call it that, a dripping almond. I'm going to go ahead and put in a center swirl to sort of work around. And now add this petal and another outside petal. And bring this one around and pull it in. And then I bring this one around and pull it in. Bring this one around, pull it in, and this is the very center of the flower, so we'll create a little bit of a swirl. And now I'm going to come and add a few outside petals. And at the bottom of this flower, we're going to have the stem kind of going in this direction. And under the roses, sometimes they have a little bit of greenery that comes out like that. So we're just going to add a little bit of that detail here. All right. I think next we're going to put a daisy right here. And daisies are a little bit difficult because they're the ones that a lot of people really want to make uh, each petal exactly the same. But when you look at daisies, there's still just a little bit more width at the end of their petals before they come to a point. So we're going to try to get that across in this drawing. And I'm going to put a daisy right here. And remember, your daisy does not have to look like my daisy. Your floral paint or drawing doesn't have to look like mine. This is completely yours. And flowers are all so unique, just like we are, that whatever you do, you cannot go wrong. So I have my first set of petals here. And now I'm going to go in and add filling petals to the backs here. OK. So now I have my foreground flowers, my flowers in the front. And now I'm going to start adding my flowers that you don't see directly. You know, they're back here in the middle and in the back of the vase. They're still there, but you don't see them as a whole flower. You'll see um, bits of them. So I'm going to go ahead and add another rose, sort of like this one, here in the middle. And you can draw through your flowers using a soft hand if it helps you see what you're drawing more. And there's the center of my rose, because we can erase it later. Let's see. And I've also, and looking back, I've decided that I also want to add one more lily petal up here, just as a compositional choice. The composition is how your layout is set up. And right now, I like that there's a triangular composition going on. So I'm going to pull this stem of the lily down and pull this stem of this rose in. And maybe a few more stems, because we know there are more flowers back here that we're going to fill. 
and then the stem from the rose. And we want to put this into a vase. So we're going to begin to draw the vase before we fill in the rest of the flowers. And even though the vase that we're drawing, if we were to look at it from overhead, is round, when you're looking at it from the side, as we're going to draw it here, the lip will, instead of being round, it will be an ellipse. So it will be more of an oval shape. So we're going to go ahead and draw an oval. And there we have the lip. We're going to bring that down. And mimic that same curvature up here, down here. And then we're going to bring out the sides of our vase. Give it a nice, round, grounded bottom. And a lip at the bottom as well. Now something fun I like to do after bringing down my stem some more with my vase is just give it some twine or ribbon around the uh, lip just to give it a little character. And that can be whatever decoration you want to make it. and my strings are going to come down and be a little swirly. Okay. And before we go back up to the flowers, we're going to do our ground plane, so our table. So almost midway, halfway up through the vase, just simply do a straight line, and there's your table. So we now have this vase sitting on a table. So now we're going to go back up in here and fill in some more. And this could be leaves. It could be petals. And these shapes don't have to be uh, very specific. They can be fluid. You just want to show that there is um, some substance, that those flowers are actually back there. So maybe I bring in a leaf up here and a leaf over here. Maybe I'm going to start doing a little tiny daisy back here. And add in a leaf here. Maybe a leaf here. And really, it's just going to be whatever makes you happy and makes you feel like your bouquet, your personal bouquet, would look like. If you could pick any set of flowers in the world. Let's stick another leaf over there. Okay, so now we're ready to go back over this drawing with our oil pastels. And just be careful with what you're doing with the side of your hand, not laying it on the drawing so that you don't smudge everything everywhere. All right, so here we go. And it may be difficult to get precise lines, and that's okay. It does not have to be perfect. You do not have to perfectly trace over your drawing. This black is just adding um, some drama to this painting. It's going to really make our paintings pop once we add the color in. And if you don't cover 
the pencil with the oil pastel, that's okay, we can erase the pencil. No big deal. And also make sure that you're not holding your oil pastel too tightly. If you hold it too tightly, then you're gonna start to jerk and you're gonna find that you're not gonna be able to get these smooth curves um, and you'll end up hurting your hand and you'll get tired very quickly. And there is a lot here to cover. the daisy. These petals are thinner so this one's a little bit more tricky and try to get those outlines in. Remember no daisy is perfect and that's what makes them wonderful. They're all unique. Many artists love using flowers as their subject. One you may or may not have heard of is Georgia O'Keeffe. She's very famous for doing very large florals. So once we finish this lesson and you've become a little bit more uh, familiar with drawing flowers, maybe you'll want to do a new project and try making even bigger florals or smaller florals. And just come up with your own unique style like Georgia O'Keeffe did. All right, and here we go with this ellipse. This is something that some people find really tricky doing an ellipse, but I have faith in you and I know you can do it. I'm just gonna go right around the edge slowly, taking our time. And done. See, no problem. All right, and now we're almost finished and we can begin coloring. I'm gonna add in my twine my little ribbon down here that swirls and swirls and the other side and again slowly around the sides slowly around the side and the very bottom lip And don't forget your ground plane, the tabletop. All right, so now that we have finished outlining our piece, we can now do the really fun part and add the colors. And these can be any colors you want, but what I want you to do with this is focus on warm and cool colors. And what are those? So, let's see. Here I have these little swatches for you. Typically what's considered warm colors are colors you might think of that are hot. Things you think of that are hot or, or spicy things you think of when you're out in the warm sun. So like your reds, oranges, yellows. Now your cool colors, things you think about when you're in the shade or the cold or you think of ice. So colors like your greens, your blues, purples. Now 
even with that said, you still can have things like a warm red or a cool red. You see, this warm red, it tends to lean towards more of an orangey color. The cool red is leaning more towards a purple. You can have a warm green and a cool green. You see, the warm green has a little bit more yellow in it. And the cool green has a little bit more blue. So even though this can go way down a rabbit hole and can become very complex, we're going to stick with this. We're going to try to keep our warm colors on this end and the cool colors on this end. Warm, red, oranges, yellows, cools, greens, blues, and purples. And what's great about warm and cool colors, using them in your piece, is that warm colors help what you want to stand out in the foreground really pop and cool colors really help push things back in the background. So we're going to try to do our flowers in warm colors and keep our background and other elements we want to push back in cool colors. Okay, so before you start uh, dipping into your watercolor, you may realize that you have some lines like I have here that you want to erase from your pencil. So if you want to get rid of those, just go ahead and pick up your eraser and very carefully go back in and just get those guys out of there. And be careful not to pull at your oils, your oil colors, because they will smear so just try to be very gentle when going in and getting those, those extra graphite lines up from your pencil. And I have a few smudges over here that I do not want on my painting. They're gone. Okay, now you don't want to get your shavings off by brushing your hand over the painting or the drawing that you have so far because that's going to smear everything. Just take your paper like this and go. And then maybe give it a nice tap like this. The second tap. And you keep your hands clean and no smudges. All right. So now we get to go to the fun part with the coloring. I'm going to be using the Creative Inspirations 8 round brush and the Soho Easy Lift watercolor set that I have right here in front of me. And I think that I want to start off making my first lily orange. That lily at the top. Make sure you get your, your brush very wet, very saturated, so you can activate your paints. Let your brush roll in there a little bit until you see some bubbles. That way you know that you're getting plenty of paint on your brush. And then apply in light strokes. And try not to be too heavy handed so that you don't pull any of your oils. You can paint over the oils um, and everything will, will be fine. They won't mix, but if you do it too heavily, then you will have the black mixing in with your, your color. And I'm trying to go in the direction of my petals too. You can see that I'm following the edges of my petals when I'm painting. Oh. And now I'm going to switch colors, so I'm going to make sure that I got all of that orange off of my paintbrush here in the water before I go to the next color. So that way I don't have color contamination and mixing. So I'm going to take this, and I want my lily to have yellow tips. 
And I'm actually going to let that yellow blend in here with that orange and give it almost this neat sunset look. My lily is going to have little sunsets on the edge of each petal. Happy lilies. And there is no right or wrong way to color in your flowers. These are your flowers. And again, all flowers are unique and come in so many different colors and have so many different uh, patterns and styles to them. There's just no way that you can mess up a flower. So now I'm going to take a little bit of this pinky color and do this rose. And this is kind of a nice round petal that I can just fill in real quick like this. Some back and forth strokes. And get those back petals. Don't forget those petals in the back. They may be behind the giant petals, but they're just as important. see and I guess I'm gonna give this rose I'll give it I'll give it an orange center and since I'm working in the orange I'm gonna go ahead and do the center of my daisy too I'm gonna pick up some more yellow start adding in the yellow of the daisy. And you don't have to stick to one color for each flower. Maybe I want also some orange petals in the daisy. So then I'll go to this guy back here and do the same thing. And give him a little bit more yellow too. So now I have this other rose. I'll pick a different red for that one. Actually, maybe I'll go a little bit, I'll go a little bit more hmm, of an orangey red. That was a pinky red. Remember, really work the brush into those pans. Okay. And again, not, uh, we don't want to forget those flowers in the back here. So there's another garden rose. I'm going to fill in back here. And give it more of an ochre center. Now I'm going to focus on the greenery in here and filling in back here. There's a lot of white space and we want to show that again those flowers in the background are there, that it's a full bouquet. And so I really like this sort of olive green and I'm going to start with that. I'm going to fill in under the rose here. Let's 
see. And these are more of my, my foreground leaves. So I'm using, again, a little bit of a warmer green. But we don't have to focus on that, just getting down our green is enough. Now I think I want to add some more of this cool bright green, this fun green. Add another pop of color. And we're going to fill in here. And then go back and fill in this negative space. Okay, now that we've finished up our bouquet, we're going to pay attention to our vase. And let's see, I'm thinking I'm wanting my vase to be the blue, this blue right here. I'm going to start out filling in that ellipse up at the top and dip back into my color and fill in here around the edge of the top. Add a little bit more blue in there. And now we're going to do something fun with the bottom of the vase and make it look like there's light shining off the glass. So we're going to make some broad strokes here and just cover Cover around, dip the brush again, get some more blue, bring it around here, but we are not going to cover in this space. And keep bringing your color around, bring it around, following the curves of the vase. And now you've created a light source. It's as though there is light coming from up here, and this little bit of shine is what's reflecting off the glass as the light hits it. Pretty neat technique. All right, and now all we have left to do is to color in our table. And again, thinking of cool colors, and I've already done the vase in blue, um, maybe I'll do a slightly different blue. I'll do a lighter blue. And just do a gentle wash back there. A little bit more green. And it's okay if your color isn't even. That's just adding texture and more character to your painting, and it makes it look really interesting. It makes it unique. Okay. So now we've completed our floral bouquet, and you have a unique piece as it is right now. And this is where we're going to stop for our beginners out there. If you are um, in the more advanced class, we're going to keep going and add some acrylics and background to this piece right now.
So welcome back to our advanced crowd. I have taken the painting that I had back here and moved it over here to show you how we're going to add some highlights with acrylics and fill in our background. Um, uh, if you still need some time to let your uh, piece dry, go ahead. You can pause me and come back. So I'm gonna pick a few bright colors here that I wanna use as highlights. So I'm looking at where I wanna add highlights in my flowers. So in these yellows, oranges, and reds. So I'm probably going to pick this bright cadmium orange and cadmium yellow, my lemon yellow. and a white. And I'm going to apply these in my palette. Remember you do not need too much paint. Don't um, try not to make huge blobs of paint in here because we're just doing highlights. We're not going to need very much. And I'm going to make sure to have a paper towel with me so that I can blot off my paintbrush as I need it um, and make sure that since these are acrylics, I've gotten all the color washed out of my brush between using different colors so I don't mix them by accident. So I'm going to use the Round 6 Creative Inspirations brush. It's a little bit smaller than the brush we were working with earlier so I can get in the details a little bit more finely. So I'm going to dip into my yellow here. I'm just going to bring it around. Just add some real quick highlights in here to help the edges pop. And this does not have to be exact. We're just wanting some colorful strokes. Maybe we add some texture in there too, like in the middle of this garden rose. And just a gentle application of pressure up and down with the brush. And now I'm going to rinse out that yellow and dry it off on this paper towel and make sure there's nothing on it. And go back in with this orange here. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of shadow as well, just at the bottom of this rose, because it already has a fairly bright top. Just at the bottoms of the petals, just quick brush marks. And we're adding some depth to these flowers. And now we're going to do a little bit of mixing in the palette. I think I want to give this rose right here, actually a little bit of a very soft orange highlight. Even though it's pink, it's got these orangey flowers over here, so the light will be um, bouncing off and can give this rose over here just a little hint of that orange. Now I'm going to grab some of the white 
can make the highlight even a little bit more dramatic around what I've already done. Okay. I'm going to take the white and up here in these little guys I'm going to add just a little bit of a highlight too. In the leaves. Just a little bit. And I think that is good as far as highlights go in the bouquet. And now we're just gonna go back into our watercolor and pick a nice background color. And we can just do a simple wash to fill in um, whatever we have going on against the wall here. So I think I might want to use this pinky color. It's a little bit purple. So I'm gonna make sure that to do a wash, my brush is very saturated. And we're covering a larger area. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the 10 round of the Creative Inspirations brushes we've been using. And really dip into that color. And just be free with your strokes. Be careful not to go over the lines of your drawing. Now we have our completed bouquet with background and highlights. Um, we can just let this dry and set it up for everybody to look at. So what we've covered in today's lesson are shapes, being sure to look at the outside world and really pay attention to the shapes of things. In the flowers, we were focusing on the shapes of the petals and not just making you know, the shapes that we may see in our minds, just plain old circles and ovals. Instead, noticing that petals have individual shapes and that goes for everything in nature. We also focused on warm and cool colors and how warm colors can really help bring things in the foreground more forward and pop and how cool colors really help push things into the background. So thank you so much for following along with me. I hope you guys all had fun. I did and we'll have plenty more of these coming up and I hope to see you on the next Art Explorations for Kids.